What's going on you guys? Welcome back to another video. Welcome back to part 3, Would You Rather, Metal and Rock, where Alex asks me questions and then I answer them. If you haven't gone to check out part 1 and 2, there will be a link in the description and there will be cards at the top right hand corner of the screen. They don't really have anything to do with each other, although there will be some references back to those two parts. But I totally recommend it you guys, we put so much work and effort into this video. And it was honestly really, really fun. You get to learn a much, much, much about us as musicians and what our taste in music uh, is and just like our styles and stuff. It's, it's a cool video. Alright, thank you guys. I'll see you in the outro. Bye. Alright, next up, Selling England by the Pound and Scenes from a Memory by Dream Theater. So, these are some of the two best, arguably the two best albums in Prague. And I'm just going to say this right out of the bat. Um, Selling England by the Pound might be my favorite album of all time. I'm not sure, but that definitely goes over Scenes from a Memory. Um... Scenes from a memory. I'm so one-sided. I haven't really gotten into Genesis. Yeah. I. That's this is such a separate video, and Alex is gonna get so <laughs> upset. I mean, Genesis, their popular stuff. Yeah, it's it's cool. I can get into it, but like, just sometimes, sometimes. Okay, no, all the time. I guess. Like, I have to be in the oddest mood if, I, if I'm if i gonna be like, okay, I'm gonna listen to this Genesis. I, I can't. I can't. No. Neil Peart versus on. Mike Portnoy. There, that's something you can get behind, not this <laughs> horrible 70s prog. Oh no, what are I you I never gonna do? said it was horrible. Okay. I have a certain amount of respect for it. <laughs> yeah, okay. I, I just can't get behind it. I mean, it's just, it's like you and Taylor Swift. Or you and it's like it's like you nobody, and Nickelback. Nobody can get behind Nickelback, Michael. All right, Alex. all right. Mike Portnoy for me, definitely. Um, <sighs> every like, if you uh, listen to Six O'clock by mm. Dream Theater, or if you listen to like, Honor the Father, Honor, Honor Thy Father, oh. that drum intro. Oh, Mamma Mia, so good. <laughs> what what do you think? <laughs> it was Italian. <laughs> Did you like that one? Okay, um, Neil Peart, after he passed away in January, um, yeah, yeah, definitely, I started listening to him more, and I, really concentrating on, on his stuff, especially a lot of his solos, that, in some ways, uh, Mike Portnoy is, mm, <laughs> I, I don't under, I, I don't know how to describe it. I I'll pick Mike Portnoy. He is my favorite drummer. Neil Peart. This is gonna sound super wrong to you guys, but in my mind this makes sense. Neil Peart, his solos are more complex. Mike Portnoy's writing style that's more complex than Neil Peart's. But Neil Peart's solos are more complex than Mike Portnoy's. And the thing with Mike Portnoy is he's he's a metal drummer. He brought the metal to Dream Theater, but I, okay, uh, this is another video topic. I am writing a script for this. Mike Mangini is better for the prog aspect in Dream Theater than Mike Portnoy is. Whoa. I'm going to put that out there, but I do prefer Mike Portnoy over Mike Mangini. Not yeah, Mike Portnoy, Mike Portnoy for sure. I mean, Nightmare to Remember, absolutely incredible song. I mean, mm. with that, that probably... Like, that Glass Prisons, his double bass technique, the galloping technique, and that Mike Portnoy feel incredible. Um, yeah, sorry, Neil. Okay, Sounding the Seven Trumpet, Avenged Sevenfold, or When Dream and Day Unite by Dream Theater. Um, I'm going to go with Dream Theater. I'm just, like, their debut album is good, but it's not Dream Theater. But I still think it's better than Avenged Sevenfold's debut. Um, like, I feel like... Avenged Sevenfold's, excuse me, the Avenged Sevenfold's debut, it kind of follow the same sort of pattern in each song. It's like mm -hmm. guitar intro or drum intro, and then it goes into a chuggy riff, and then the screaming vocals, and then the chorus. It, it's almost like a metalcore album. To end the rapture, are you, like, yeah, that's the first like, track. I, I just remembered that, yeah. That's what I was talking about earlier. Uh, I gotta go with the Venge Sevenfold on this one too. And the Rapture, incredible way to start off the album. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's the Revs va backup vocals. I mean, <laughs> it's funny to me. Uh, <laughs> I kind of got a laugh when he does his 
when he goes when he does the higher octaves uh I don't know I I think it's so funny mm -hmm. but um yeah I got to I got to do sounding the seventh trumpet um the second song the second track off the album which to end the rapture goes into also good it it does sound a little more chuggy like you said but mm -hmm. not not as much screaming vocals Okay, um, let's go on to the next one. Would you rather wake up to your least favorite song every morning, so like that would be your alarm clock, or uh, never be able to listen to your favorite genre of music? I could never not listen to Prague. I mean, I get, you could probably say, oh, explore different genres of music, but Prague, that goes with Dream Theater, that goes with any, everything in the 70s, that was Prague. No way, I, I couldn't do that. I mean, that's too, that's too hard for me. Hacking the system, I don't wake up with an alarm in the summer and um, in the weekend, so literally half the time I'm not using an alarm. If I were, so during school, that's so hard because my least favorite song, I can't even tell you what it is. I probably haven't even discovered it yet. Um, the thing is, when I wake up to a song, I'm going to be humming that till 8 or 9 in the morning. Um... If I wake up at six, that means I'm gonna be I'm gonna be thinking about that song for the next three hours. That's something really hard for and me. It's the same song but every single day. Listening to the broad genre genre of rock and metal, um, that's even harder. So I that's a no brainer. Definitely listen to your least favorite song every morning, especially if I picked one of those absolutely awful rap songs that are like what thirty seconds. It's 30 seconds. Yeah. I mean, I could deal with it. <laughs> I, or I even better, wake up to your least favorite TikTok. Oh, no. Oh, But they're, they're like 15 seconds long. You would never okay. remember it. Bagel, bagel. Bagel, tear. Put it reverse, tear. Put it reverse. Oh, Lord. Lord, Jesus. Oh, Lord. Oh, Jesus. What the, what, what you doing, tear? Tear, what the, what? All right, next up, <laughs> Toasted Obazi or Guthrie Govan? You probably want to sit this one out. What? Wait. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Who are these guys? You know, uh, Guthrie Govan did erotic cakes, uh, lots of solo material, uh, you know, wonderful slippery thing. No, uh, wait, Toasted Obazi is in uh, Animals as Leaders. Is he the guitar player? Yeah. Yeah, I He's the him. weird, I can't do it with my thumb. But he bends his thumb yeah. back like that. He has the like cool that. white guitar. Oh yeah, he yeah, has like the seven, sick seven like string eight other. string. Yeah, yeah. So, so much. So I, like, I would pick him. Can't talk about him too much, um, because he's the guitar person. So I'll let him talk about it. I got it. I'm, I'll be right back. Uh, I'm gonna have to choose Guthrie Govan on this one, mainly for his album uh, Erotic Cakes. And if you don't believe me that he's a better guitarist than Tosin. That's fine, but if you want to, go ahead and check out Erotic Cakes. That is an amazing album. And if uh, if you want to, uh, also check out the solos throughout um, Wonderful Slippery Thing. And uh, yeah, I would totally pick Guthrie Govan over uh, Tosin Nabazi. So I'm just going to wait here until Michael gets back. So Michael's back, and we're going to go on to the next one. Six minutes left. The next one is the guitarist in Metallica, so Kirk Hammett or James Hetfield. I'm gonna go right off the bat and say James Hetfield. James. Uh, Kirk is like the lead stuff, and obviously he can play very fast technical things and shreddy solos. His style, I don't, um, I don't want to get anybody mad, but it's sort of like he's not very creative. And it's sloppy. And it's so live. I I wouldn't I wouldn't say that. But it can be sloppy, but yeah. But like I would choose James because of the down picking and he does all the rhythm stuff. Kirk's playing. Put this out of this. Uh, Kirk's weird. Uh, I mean, sweatpants and Converse. What's going on? That. Well, are you what? <laughs> what? Nineties him. But but on their last tour, twenty seventeen, like twenty nineteen oh, to twenty nineteen. Yeah, but. Why? What? I don't know. I'm talking I'm, about his guitar playing, not his style. Okay. We do a whole video on Metallica's <sighs> style. That's thing. not metal. I, James Hetfield, all the tattoos, the hair, uh, a 
bullet like a bullet belt that that's cool that that's, that's metal, metal. Uh, the boots like the the jean jacket like leather yeah, the metal and then and then and then you, you got the other the lead over here with sweatpants and converse stop I, making fun of him they're I, old dude I'm, they're I'm, like in their but that makes it 60s. even worse that makes nah, it who worse who cares okay. they're metallica you i'm can't sorry say that. uh but kirk kirk <laughs> he's cool he's good but yeah. james james is more unique i would say again like he said down picking um I like I like James uh, guitar is better his model of guitar uh, even that the Kirk's guitars are cool I like the purple he one the sparkle one styles. yeah I like but I do like um, James's guitar model okay. better all right next one is 80s classic metal or anything in the 90s till now but any band that started in like the mid eight, eight, eighties and then they did stuff in the nineties. I don't think I'm gonna count that for that category because nineties till now that's a big thing. So um I mean eighties metal includes Megadeth, Pantera, Metallica, Iron Maiden, I mean Black Sabbath is the seventies, I mean Judas Priest seventies, but I'm gonna count them as the eighties because you know I mean anything like yeah. in that in that 80s, era. Like they were they still did stuff in the eighties. So yeah, I'm definitely gonna do 80s. Uh, what about you? Would Dream Theater be the earlier? Dream Theater would be uh, would 90s. Be... So it eventually unfold. Um, sacrificing that, I think I would definitely go with the 80s because when yes. I'm not listening to Dream Theater and Avenged Sevenfold, just two. Dream Theater is my main band. That's my go-to. Mm. Then next, it's like a 15-way tie. When I'm not listening to Dream Theater, it could be Avenged Sevenfold. It could be Slipknot. It could be it could be Iron Maiden. It could be Metallica. Anything that my shuffle will give me, I rarely skip a song. It, I yeah, I gotta go 80s. I mean, there's so much stuff that if that wasn't written metal would be just so weird oh yeah they inspired everything to come like black yeah. sabbath i would say started the whole metal thing and then like uh you know everything else that happened uh let's go on to the next one one up is iron maiden versus metallica this one is hard <laughs> there's tons of metallica on this list like metallica is in like every other one Jeez, I'm gonna say um, Metallica. Yeah, I would go with Metallica. Now, <laughs> I know more Metallica songs, but Iron Maiden is arguably. Well, so is Metallica. If you don't know Iron Maiden, you know Metallica. But other than that, you know you know both bands. I mean, they are the. There's three like three faces of metal it's metallica iron maiden and black sabbath if you don't know those like you're not metal. you're a baby i yeah. mean you you everybody <laughs> has heard of either iron maiden metallica or black sabbath yeah 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 so i, I would have to go metallica i think overall you're getting you're getting more out of it but iron maiden good music power metal i mean their vocalist, what's his name, like Bruce? Um, Bruce, uh, yeah, Bruce. He, oh my God, he is incredible. He can hit those he, he can he, he can hit the high notes, but he can also sing with that nice nice growly voice. But then Steve Harris and their three guitarists, their live show is absolutely incredible. Like Fear the Dark, seeing that live would just be so surreal. It would be it would be like my dream. <laughs> um, but Metallica. Mm -hmm. I feel like I feel like in a way they're more modern. Uh, the the thrashy style is definitely different than power metal. Their live shows, I actually probably would say, are some uh, probably like one of the best shows in the world. I mean, they they play music, but they also put on a show. So does Iron Maiden. I mean, that that's so hard. I I, I gotta stick with Metallica. I think. I mean. Both those bands, it's not music, they also, they just put on a show. I mean, they both have incredible pyrotechnics. I mean, just watch one live. And Iron Maiden, they, they use all their props and their stage is set to a theme. 
I, uh, yeah. What's power metal? Like Dragon Force or something? Dragon Force. I wow. Mean, <laughs> no. I, I don't want to say respect, anything. Respect to Dragon Force, but. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> okay. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Again, if you haven't gone to check out part one and two, and if you want to, there will be credits at the end, and there will also be a link in the description. So yeah, I totally encourage you guys to go check it out if you enjoyed this video. They're very, very similar, just better, and more questions that we ask each other. So I'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you guys so much for watching. Leave a like, subscribe, and I'll see you guys next week. Bye.